you very much <laughs> to be here in Singapore. And first of all, I want to, of course, to wish you a happy new year. Okay. This year is already off to a good start, of course, with Imagination Week, which is celebrating its fifth anniversary. Last week, we did Imagination Week at Sergi. Everybody knows Sergi, I presume, with the same team, the same methodology, but of course, different speakers. And for the first time, we do it in Singapore, it's also with master's students, the SMIP students. When it was first created, it was designed to foster SX missions, with which by now you are, of course, I hope, very familiar, this mission. The mission of ESSEC is to create and disseminate cutting-edge knowledge to train and develop both pioneer influencer for both the business world and society as a whole. The goal of our Imagination Week echo this mission. This week is designed to give you a glimpse into the evolution of our fast-changing world and help you understand what drives it is so you can build the foundation of tomorrow. In other words, how to think and imagine the future. How to acquire a pioneering and visionary spirit. This is achieved by calling a number of techniques, number of skills that certainly you know about and around imagination, knowing how to dream, how to create, how to innovate, having a certain ability to put different forms of knowledge and now how into perspective. Transdisciplinary is a driving force of our week. Transdisciplinary concerns itself with objects and issues which does not fall strictly within a specific discipline. It combines discipline with no constraints or limitation in order to reach a single goal through a variety of activities. The manifesto of transdisciplinary argue that as a preface, trans explains and indicates concerns that which is at one between the disciplines, across the different disciplines and beyond each individual discipline. But the main goal of transdisciplinary is this one, understanding of the present world. Over 20 years ago, the manifesto of transdisciplinary led to the establishment of the Charter of Transdisciplinary, was established during the first World Congress of Transdisciplinary in Portugal, and promotes values such as rigor, opening, and tolerance. The transdisciplinary visions is resolutely open in so far as it goes beyond the field of exact sciences and demands their dialogue and their reconciliation with the humanities and the social sciences as well as with art, literature, poetry, and spiritual experience. It promotes, this charter, the dignity of the human being as a citizen of the world, and views education as the authentic path to the development of intuitions, imagination, sensibility, and the body. Finally, this charter is grounded in strong ethical principles which posit that the economy must serve the human being and not the reserve. Imagination Week was modeled on this philosophy and is designed to foster innovative discussion on contemporary issues with different approaches which we will explore throughout the week. First, cognitivism, culture teamwork designed to lead you to a better understanding of yourself and of others to foster the emergence of critical thinking through a unique and flexible methodology. Foster unique guidance towards a value-creating sense of imagination through personal and collective discussion, encouraging you to think outside the box, to look at the world with different eyes. Foresight, having to design and develop a future-looking and visionary project to challenge not just what you know, but also what you need and your vision. <coughs> this entire week is a demonstration of transdisciplinary with experts from all walks of life, as you will discover in your welcome pack and from here on the screen. I will introduce them throughout the week, but as you can already see, you will expose to field ranging from science to heart. Your coaches, your tutors will guide you during the week 
and help you work as a team. You will find all the information you need about your group and your coach in your welcome pack, along with the planning until Friday. Of course, you are expected to attend, and uh, attendance will be monitored. The instruction you need and the profile of the different speakers with whom you will interact. Your coaches will go over the details of what is expected during this week and the requirements for the group project. Just in few words, the goal is for you, per group, to share the visions about the future of work. I will explain this theme just after. And you will pitch on Friday on five, min five minutes. I would, like to, I would like you to know that this week is very important for all of us is a tribute to the Professor Hervé Matt. Professor Hervé Matt, who passed two days ago. More than a friend of mine, he was a professor who greatly contributed to the development of HESEC in different departments for almost 30 years. You have to yeah, know, no, it was because he was the dean of HESEC Asia Pacific for two years, and he was one of the leaders of the development of the building we are in today. And we collectively decided to dedicate it, this first Imagination Week in Singapore to him. Each year, we, we started, as I, said, as I, as I mentioned, um, we, we started five years ago, and each, each year we have a, a specific team. And this year, it's about uh, working to live our life, into, living to work. That's the main, the main topic. And before, I will have the, the, the floor to our first um, conference, the first lecture. I would like to give you some few words about working to live and living to work. And your mission, that's your mission for all the week long, is to imagine the work, how you are going to work within the future, and basically around 2035, 2050, you are in your 40s at this moment. The phrase working to live, living to work, is somewhat paradoxical. There are several words in English to express the notion of work. First, work comes from the old English and means to prepare, produce, <coughs> but also to exert creative power, to be a creator. We also speak of travail, which means suffering or painful effort. It's derived from the Latin word tripalium, literally three stakes, an instrument of torture used by ancient Romans to punish rebel slaves. The word labor which is close in meaning, comes from another Latin word, labor, and means toil or trouble. The notion of work, when it is at the cross between turmoil, painful effort, and creativity. And of course, the other word, live, comes from Old English, means to have life, to pass life, or burning, glowing, and spent energy, and therefore conveys a positive connotation of a sense of vitality. I won't, of course, discuss in detail this notion of work because all the speakers that we will have this week will be, of course, focused on this notion. But your work will start tonight, and I want to just share some few words with you. First, the main question is, is the work freeze us or alienate us? And as a consequence, what kind of work can we wish for? To be alienated is to be estranged from oneself. Alienation is to be outside of yourself, due to a loss of the self. In his works, of course, Karl Marx clearly argued that work is alienation when he states that, I will quote it, first, the fact that labor is external to the worker. It does not belong of his intrinsic nature, that in his works, therefore, he does not have him himself but denies himself, does not feel content but happy, does not develop freely his physical and mental energy but mortifies his bodies and ruins his mind. Karl Marx goes even further when he says, labor itself not merely in present conditions, but in general in so far and at its purpose is the mere increase of wealth is harmful and pernicious. In order to protect workers and guarantee they had time to leave, in 1924, International Labor Conference in Washington had up the conventions as a result of which one of the purpose of the International Labor Conference held in Geneva the same year. That was, to secure workers beyond the necessary hours for sleep, 
an adequate period during which such workers could do as they please, in other words, an adequate period of spare time. This is an admission that work is alienating, that is involved constraint. It is only outside works that workers can do what they please. This is what pushed by the famous philosopher, the French one, Guy Debord, to suggest in La Société du Spectacle, the society of spectacle, that the notion of work be abandoned altogether to make a way for, I quote him, a new kind of productive activity. And what was needed was nothing less than the dominance of workers over the machines. Guy Debord proposals are a complete reversal which would involve, I will quote him, shifting the focus of interest in life from passive leisure to the new kind of productive activity. This is, does not mean that all productive activity will overnight become themselves passionately interesting. However, working towards making them passionately interesting by a general and permanent reconversion of the objective and also of the means of industrial work is what is needed to have a minimum of passion in a free society. In other words, works should not be dissociated from leisure and pleasure. The focus of life should be formed in work itself, combining pleasure and works produce what Guy Debord referred to as a productive activity. For example, he said we have to build our house by ourselves. The exercise of imagination is so important. Since the beginning of the 1970s until the end of the 1990s, philosophers, sociologists such as Debord but also Bourdieu challenged the notion of work. And our exercise for this week is how could we do the work for the future? It's not so far away. 2035 is right around the corner. New working style and ways of working are already be defined. Leather sprays are now found in our workspaces. The newer generations of workers are ultra connected. Expert multitaskers who combine work and pleasure. Digital technologies have made working from home or co-working possible. Work can now be done remotely, which in turn in redefining our work environments. This new paradigm means workers can benefit from the comfort of their home. Digital technologies, the, shame, the famous sharing economy and exchange platforms enable direct connections among inventors and private individuals, manufacturers and consumers, individual users, Today, new sources of incomes are accessible and others can pay unemployment. They have given rise to a way, a new way of work, independent work, in so doing what we call it generally the sharing economy. The challenge, some of the fundamental assumptions of capitalism and works in the 20th century. We can see, of course, in our daily life, Herber can provide chauffeur, Handy supplies cleaner, Spoon Rockets delivers restaurants meal to your door, Instacap keeps your fridge stocked, Airbnb, and so on. In the meantime, revolutions and collaborative revolution will go on in hand with something which is have an obsession by the famous Jeremy Rifkin, the replacement of workers with machines. Artificial intelligence and robotics will bring about such as an increase in productivity that the factories, stores, offices will need less and less harm and brains. 20 years after the famous book, The Hand of Work, history has proved Jeremy Briskin's right, even if it does ultimately lead to an exorable rise of unemployment. For Jeremy Rifkin, such as a reality is not a disaster because the collaborative model, the collaborative economy will able men and women to continue to find fulfillment outside today's world of work. For example, through charity, solidarity, which is somewhat reminiscent of the ideas of Guy Debord. Working life, living to work, the future is on your hands. And the main goal for your week is to think about what is the future of the work. Thank you very much. <laughs>